Creatively inspired, self-expression derived, but healthy hair motivated are the words to best describe James Jamez Smith. With endless study and practice, he moved through the ranks from a junior stylist to the position of director of color education. Jamez is now the owner and creative director of Hair Teak Color and Design located in Philadelphia. From precision and freeform cutting to fashion forward hair coloring and a natural talent for taking hair to the next level, he landed positions with Lacme Hair Care at the Deepa Squall Salon Systems, Patrick Bradley Team Hollywood, and Farouk Systems Creative Artistic Team. He worked as a brand educator and platform artist for the listed hair color and styling brands, and Jamez is a member of the Elite Hair Color Organization, the American Board of Certified Hair Colorists. He provides advanced coloring, cutting, styling techniques, business building, and motivational speaking. His professionalism has allowed him to create looks for celebrities such as house music legend Crystal Waters, gospel recording artist Yana Crawley, actresses Rosario Dawson, and Cheryl Lee Ralph. The Cheryl Lee Ralph. We're huge fans and we can't wait for you to hear from him. All right, I am joined by Jamez. Smith, welcome to the podcast. How's it going? Uh, it's going good. Um, today has been a busy day, but things are good. Can't complain. You know, 2023 has started. And, you know, all the goals that we set in place should be in motion. So it's it's starting off pretty interesting right now. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Big things for Philly. Um, not everybody knows this. I know this. I know Jamez. Um, he's in Philly and the Eagles are doing big things. I'm not into sports, but I know that it's a big deal for the city. So congrats on top of all of the other things that are happening for 2023. Thank you. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. <laughs> All right, Jamez, let's get into it. Um, Tell us about your background. How did you get started in beauty and hair? How did I get started in beauty and hair? To be honest, to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Please. I got dared. Yeah. Uh, Hair and beauty was, I mean, hair necessarily was not something that I sought after or anything like that. So what happened was um, I had dropped out of college. Um, I was going in my freshman semester. Um, at the time, it was called Philadelphia Textiles and Science, mm-hmm. which was a heavy fashion major um, college. Mm-hmm. And I went to freshman, kind of like the orientation where they pair seniors that are on their way out with the incoming freshmen. And I mean, my peers had like portfolios and they had drawn out sketches. I mean, they were full on ready to be like the next John Galliano or Karl Lagerfeld. I mean, lean, like whoever, whatever designer that you admire, these kids were on it. I came in there with an old scrapbook photo album with material because at that time, me going into school, there wasn't a major for what is now called fashion styling. So anyway, I dropped out. I got scared. I didn't go back. My parents were a little upset. Well, my mom was upset. My stepdad was just like, what are we going to do with you? And I was like, I don't know. But by this time, I kind of like moved out at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I worked at a family salon, my aunt's salon. And I was the receptionist. She said, here, come here. You know, you can make a couple of dollars to you figure out what you're going to do with your life. You already have enough. You got to, you're an adult now. So I started working. And me and the shampoo assistant that she had at the time did not see eye to eye. So we were always just rag on each other, go back yeah. and talk and, you know, <laughs> nitpick and everything I did wrong, she pointed out. Everything she did wrong, I pointed out. And one particular night, um, the assistant was going out and my aunt was finishing up her last client, but the shampoo assistant needed to leave. So she had to do her own hair. And she was recreating a look that my aunt had did a previous week. And I was just like, that don't look nice. Mm-mm, I think you're doing that wrong. And and I just kept antagonizing her. Just, I mean, it was for fun. It was young, yeah, you know, yeah. well over 20 something years ago. And I was just like pushing the envelope. And she was like, you act like you can do better. And I was like, I probably could. And I think I kind of put my foot in my mouth at that moment <laughs> because I never really did hair, never touched yeah. it. And then, you know, helping out maybe lightly shampooing or something like that. And my aunt was just like, she chimed in and she finished her client was just like, oh, does this sound like a wager? And I'm just like, well, I don't lose bets. So what do you <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was um, basically we kind of did like this whole grab the piece of paper off the copy machine with a black Sharpie. If Jabez does this hairstyle great, Donna was her name. Mm-hmm loses her paycheck and vice versa. If he does a horrible job, Jamez loses his paycheck. Sure. And I'm like, oh, I'm not losing my money. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not losing my money. So what happened was I just picked up the curlers and just mimicked everything that I saw my aunt 
do. Because the reception mm. was close to her station. And I, how she put her curlers in and how she took them out and how she blew them and mimic what I thought that she was doing. And mm. behold, it, it came out okay. I mean, it wasn't the best, but I mean. For the first try, we, we wouldn't expect excellence. But, exactly. okay. but to the point where I actually won the bet, I took her paycheck home. But I gave it back to her the next morning. I let her sweat a yeah, little bit, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, but in all in all, that moment made me realize, hey, I can probably do this. And my mm -hmm. aunt was like, how did you learn this? I've been around you. When did you learn this? And I said, I guess just by watching you, you know. Mm -hmm. And she started challenging me, asking me questions. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And that, you know, we were getting into chemicals and I was helping her shampoo one day. And I was like, why does the hair feel like this? What does this do? Does she start breaking mm -hmm. products to me? And it just came up. It just kept going and going. The ball kept going. And then I eventually I didn't tell her until I officially signed my papers to go to hair school. Wow. And voila, 20 years later. Just like that. Um, all right. So what was the process then like for you in beauty school? Um, I mean, it sounds like you had an awakening. You understood like, oh, I'm passionate about this. This is something that I want to pursue. Um, but that passion versus the education, often a little bit different. So what was that experience like? Did you enjoy it? Do you look back fondly? Are you like, oh, that was a mess. I'm glad that's done. What are your thoughts? <laughs> My freshman year. So the school that I went to was an Aveda concept school. And at that time, it was very, very strict, very structured in a particular way with their culture and their curriculum because they breeded their students to go into their salons. And I came in with my little bit of experience. I felt like, and even my school kind of said at the time, the particular class that I was in, the freshman class, it seemed like everybody that was in that class was already privy to salon experiences, whether it was family experiences or they already went to a Votech school and they're just getting more information going to college school. So my freshman year was the worst because I felt like I had the least experience in cosmetology school and I just tanked at everything. The only thing I got right was curling and uh, like kind of like styling, like some of the styling things like quaffing and teasing. Um, I didn't do a great job, but I got enough. My grades were good enough to pass. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just like, yo, like I'm, I'm not. And it was also a culture difference because the school that I went to was pre predominantly straight hair and I'm coming from a texture background. Yeah. But, and I'm just like, Ugh. and I was like, you didn't go there for nothing. And I just kind of just put my heads in it and talked to my teachers, like kind of like after class and pushed and pushed. And when it clicked, it clicked. By the time I got to the clinic floor of my junior, so it was freshman, junior one, junior two, senior. That was the order of the curriculum. By the time I got to junior two and on the clinic floor, I started to have like a little clientele. So all the things that I actually failed at freshman and the beginning part of junior one was my highest ranking scores about time I exited becoming a senior. And that was hair color and hair cutting. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at that. And honestly, these are now your signatures. So like, let's, let's get into that. I mean, <laughs> I know you, um, we met at the texture versus race summit in Baltimore a couple of months back. Um, and I was floored by a color transformation that you had done um, as part of a presentation um, with Joyco product, like just mm -hmm. like absolutely blown away. Um, and the cut was also mind blowing y'all. Um, we're going to drop the links to it. We'll make sure that you see what I'm referring to. Um, but how does that feel? I mean, you, you, you said like these were your sort of weakest points and, and by the end they were where you were scoring the highest. And, and now this is like what you're known for. Um, do you take pride in that? Like, how do you keep up those skills? I do. I do take pride in it. But um, as an individual and, you know, of course, I'm being transparent with this interview, um, I take pride in a comp getting from point A to point B, but I'm always finding the flaws in it. So I take pride in it, but I don't fully glorify in it because I still see the flaws because I know what was here mm -hmm. and it's translating from here 
to the person visually so everyone else that's going to see it, you know, the client or the model or whatever I'm working on. So I, I still struggle with that. And I, maybe that's just kind of like a, a mental insecurity kind of sort of speak kind of thing. Um, but I'm always in a competition or trying to compete or raising the bar for myself mm -hmm. to get to whatever my next level is. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. I take pride in it, but I do struggle to push harder. Well, I mean, that pushing harder has served you well. Um, and has brought you to where you're at, uh, which includes being a salon owner. So talk to us about that experience. Um, it is one thing sort of going up through the ranks, having the experience of, you know, working with your aunt to mm -hmm. like doing it for yourself. So I'd love to hear, and I'm sure our listeners would love to know, like, what was that trajectory like? Did you always think you would go it alone? Like, I, I want to hear about that. And all honestly, I really thought that I was going to work for the family business for the rest of my career. Sure. Uh, but um, the Lord above said, I have a different plan for you. And all honestly, mm -hmm. and that's because of things that I sh talked with him, guy, big guy upstairs. Talk, mm -hmm. I talked with him a lot of different things, but also, um, there, it was a shift that was happening. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately the family business and what I wanted to do was it that we were no longer meshing sure. and it was to the point where my influence was outweighing the boss's power mm -hmm. and that became a struggle. And I don't think her and I, my aunt, mm -hmm. uh, understood how that was supposed to work. So in a heated argument, we split. Mm. I worked at a few different salons. Um, one wasn't my favorite, but I stayed there out of convenience of nobody knew me there. And I could just bring my clients in and I can just work and put my head down mm -hmm. and think because I'm, I'm coming from an, an atmosphere that I grew into and we all grew together. The business expanded different locations. Mm -hmm just the prestige of it, how we grew, Ch our clientele changed, our skill set changed. Um, so it was like, I just kind of felt like I lost my support system in it. Sure. And I kind of shut down and just became a worker. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? All mm -hmm. I did was just get the heads done. Yep. You, know, you know, and I did that for a couple of years. And then I went to a, a young lady salon and working with her was awesome. It was actually awesome. I honestly had no reason to leave outside of, I had already asked God for the opportunity because mm. I still had things that I wanted to put into this. I had a vision that I want to put into place. And the only reason why I chose to leave her is because I needed to know whether the things that I was thinking and feeling were true. And can I make that happen? Mm. I had entered a, a it was a company, a new company called um, Census. There are an Italian color line. And I met a gentleman that was like, hey, have you heard of Census? I was like, no, not familiar. He's like, I love your work. Why don't you come down for our educational and training? We're training for uh, team leaders. And I'm just like, I don't necessarily want to work for you, but I mean, <laughs> it's free education. Why yeah, not yeah. learn? Yep. <laughs> so I went down there and they had like an impromptu competition. They said, well, what you learned this week, um, we're going to give you a mannequin and just create something, whatever it is. And you have an opportunity to win a trip to Italy. Guess who won? Jemez, it, yes, it, yes. It, yes. Um, which was interesting because at that moment, I was talking to the salon that I was working at, the owner, and she was like, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. And she was really in my corner, uh, like really helping me come out of that pitfall that I was in. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I decided to do was look for spaces. I mean, I had shampoo bowls at my best friend's garage. I had styling chairs that I bought off of eBay. I mean, I was ready. I just needed the next opportunity and the right space mm -hmm. and the spaces that I was trying to get it didn't connect. Like, I mean, I remember one time I got into a space where I literally talked to property management and told them I'll be back Saturday with all the paperwork that you need. Cause I had it, I had mm -hmm. all the paperwork and I said, I'll be back. I'll get paid on Saturday. So mm -hmm. I'm going to come back with my money mm -hmm. order 
you know, and secure the space. I'm outside speaking with my contractor, like, what can we do to get me in and then work forward to make this happen? As me and the contractor are talking, I see a vehicle pull up. I see a young lady go in, blah, blah, blah. She comes out and gets in her car and pulls off. I go back into the, the, the building where the space was talking to another friend who was a tenant. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Like, awesome. We got, we've got great branding ideas we can do for each other, blah, blah, blah. And the property manager comes over and said, oh my gosh, I thought you left. And I was like, no, I was outside. And I was like, I have some disappointing news. I just leased out the space. And I'm like, what? Ooh. Like, are you serious? Like, no, tell me you are playing a prank right now. Like, tell me, mm -hmm. you like, yo, really tell me you joking for real. And he was like, no, I check, check ready. And, and I was like, wow. I'm like, this is Thursday. I was coming Saturday. Mm -hmm finalize everything that we need to finalize and move forward. And when I tell you that hurt me so bad and I had just came back. Um, no, I'm sorry. I was just leaving to go to Italy the next weekend. Mm. So I went to Italy. I didn't feel the most happiest because of that experience. Sure. But I said, I'm just going to go. It's a free trip. I went to see the company's collection. When I got back, I was still in that funk, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And, um, I just happened to, so I, can, I just happened to be driving and I'm driving up this street and I ride past this space and I'm just like, oh, I love those windows. Mm, that's nice. And so I kept thinking about the windows. I'm in Target. Uh -huh. yeah, everybody goes to Target. We all, yep. yeah, yeah. You know, I do my best thinking there sometimes. I'm in Target. I'm looking at the top because I have this thing where I guess my inspiration, like if they have a towel set up, Mm -hmm. I'll look at the color combinations and I'm mm -hmm. like, mm, can I duplicate that? I like how I like that palette. It makes sense. Let me see, you know, put that in my arse. I'm taking a picture, mm -hmm. you know, moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming back, same road, and I ride past it again and traffic and I'm looking at the space. But I'm like, I really love those windows. Wow, that'd be a nice salon. Small, but it'd be nice. And I'm looking at for lease to sign. And I said, all right, I'll, you know what? Let me just entertain myself right now. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, and the property manager was like, yeah, sure. Come and take a look at it. You come see it tomorrow. And I'm like, tomorrow? I'm psycho. Okay. I took a lunch break from the salon I was at, which was eight minutes away. Came over, looked at it. And I was like, wow, this feel, kind of feels like home. Me and him talked. The rent was a little bit more than what I budgeted for, but I really liked how the space was just quaint. It worked for me. Mm -hmm. And so I went and talked to one of my good friends. She's kind of like my accountability partner. And she's like, just do it. You don't know what's going to happen. So I filled out the application. They called me. This was on a Thursday. I filled it out Friday night, Tuesday morning. They called me and said, you know, we're considering you for the space. And I'm like, me? Considering? Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, what needs to happen? It was mm -hmm. like, well, we knew. Um, he remembered. I knew that you talked about the price was a concern. So, you know, these are our terms. And then I was just like, okay, threw in a counter offer, gave them three options. They picked the latter of three and it was on and popping ever since. And, and, and it was just like, it was meant for me to have that spot. It's a small 750 square feet salon. It spoke to me and I got it. <laughs> so that has been a journey transferring from being a stylist to now being responsible for a team. And it's so many T's and I's that you have to cross and dot. And I did not realize it until I'm in it with both feet. It's a great experience, but make sure you know what you're getting into. Cause you got to take the hat on, take the hat off and put another hat on. Mm -hmm. So do you think that based on what you've been saying, Anybody mm -hmm. could really be ready for it. It sounds a little bit like you don't know until you know. Um, do you have any advice or, or anything you'd say to somebody who's considering making the switch from being an independent stylist to, or maybe like renting a space Yeah, to becoming a salon owner? I'm going to say this, and I've recently learned this. For anything that you want to do in life, make sure that you understand your why. Mm -hmm. When you understand your why, 
and really break down your why. That will tell you the answer, whether it's really for you or for or not for you. You know, there's there's no other way to be able to understand that and be truthful and transparent with yourself. Like, what is the real reason why? Is it I just want to get in this to make money? Because your angle of how you're going to project the business is going to be a little bit different as opposed to, no, I want to provide a, a, a particular culture or mm-hmm. a particular environment, um, or I just want to be my own boss. All of those translate different to the culture of how your how your business is being structured. And then it also, also speaks to how detailed your paperwork behind the scenes go. I mean, whether you're going to be 1099s, W-2s, mm-hmm. all of those particular things. Do you have a budget for these particular things? Are you ready to pay taxes? Whether you're in a suburban city area, rural area, what does what does that translate when it comes down on paper? What is your profit margin? What are you trying to get to? You know, what do you think the products that you use that are your favorite? Is it in your budget to be able to get your lighteners and your your color, your your whatever it is that you need to do your inventory for your business? So um, those are a lot of different hats and they speak very, very different, especially when you're creative. Mm. There are some people that are very mm. business minded. Yep. You have left brains and right brains, you know? Some people have the blessing to be able to balance both yep. very, very easily. A lot of us struggle on mm-hmm. either side. Yep. So when you understand your why, it'll be a little bit easier to begin to go through your planning process, whether it's mm-hmm. for I'm telling, I'm not telling anybody you cannot do anything. You can do anything if you put your mind to it, but you really gotta put your mind to it. Mm. Well, speaking to that intentionality, um, I think this is actually a really good segue into, again, I talked at the top of the podcast about how you and I connected, um, Mm -hmm. which is TDR. Um, So TDR and the summit um, is all about shifting the way that our industry is operating, um, opening spaces, challenging norms, um, and making it it better. Um, And somebody who's been spearheading that is our friend, Kia Neal. Tell us about the TVR most recent summit in Baltimore. So obviously Kia has been on the podcast. We debriefed a little bit, she and I, um, and I feel like there's so much there. Um, And, but I'm curious, I'd love to understand from your perspective, like how did you feel during, after, I mean, she and I talked a lot about how it's taken time to unpack and it's still changing um, but that there was this energy um, that so much of us left with. Um, and I'd, I'd love to hear from your perspective, like, how did you find it? So in attending other TVRs that she's had, this one was, I still say it when we have our group chats and things like that, like words cannot describe what happened that weekend. It It was really, I mean, I'm quite sure you expounded on it. I saw articles. I've seen other people write about it. I've heard conversations with manufacturers and companies, but you really had to be in that space to feel what was happening because it wasn't always, it, all of it was not good, right. a good feeling. Mm-hmm. It, it was not. And that and that's transferable between the artists, between the creatives and the narratives that was happening in the room but it was all needed. Uh, mm-hmm. it, was, it was really, really a wow moment because people, I appreciated the event because people were super transparent about how they thought, what they believed things were versus what it was. And it was some people, some minds did not change. No. Uh, but I don't know if you remember the, uh, the, the like bridgeway that went from the open area that was mm-hmm. over into the physical space that bridge yep. and i was one of the first people that went in to read all of the the post-its those transparent post-its where she asked everyone to write down you know their biases mm-hmm. and on the wall you won't be judged but so we can read them and i was just blown away about how people think um, how they felt leaving the event, watching the, um, all of the talents leave the event, not the, the teachers and educators, but when I say talent, I mean, everyone the, mm-hmm. the attended, it was like a weight lifted. You've seen people smiling. You've seen people hugging. 
Um, you've seen people just engaging more social media wise. I mean, people were really receptive to what happened that weekend, the information, the techniques, um, the conversation, it was, it was very involved, very involved. And it was so involved that we had a, all, all of us, the, the team, we had a whole separate conversation afterwards because mm. it was still, we were still, we were still taking in that moment and it, 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 it was very, very different. And I, I've never experienced that on that, in that type of environment. Well, let's talk a little bit about then um, your experience of this industry. So separate from TVR and sort of how things are shaking out and how things will continue to change, I'd love to understand um, sort of where you find yourself within this space. Um, so within this industry, like how do you identify sort of where you're at, where you want to be? Um, competition is huge, as we know. Um, talk to us about like your thoughts about where you're at right now. This is a whole book, three I know. Part, ten part series. Where am I at? Um, what I have learned over the past year to two years is be whoever you're going to be and own that space. And mm -hmm. what that means to me is understanding your why mm -hmm. and understanding what does your why produce? And, and if you are confident in the why and what does the why produce, own it. Don't look left. Don't look right. Focus on whatever it is that you want to do. And I say that is because during that transition from leaving the family business, mm -hmm. I, felt like I lost my, um, my support system. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot happening. I mean, the salon was kind of, it was, a, it was a nice size salon. And I had friends that were in the industry as well, that once we came to work together, it changed the dynamic of our friendship. And I mean, I was having fun at one point, right? I mean, I'm just living in my career. This is what I set out to do. I mean, I'm competing in different competitions, locally, <laughs> whatever I'm, I'm, I'm present trying to get into Naha. I'm trying to upgrade my, my value when it comes down to understanding the nuances of what that takes. I mean, I'm meeting different people. I mean, I'm traveling overseas. Like I got a chance to go to the Dallas at in London, mahogany in London. Like I'm at the different shows I'm traveling everywhere and I'm just living it up, soaking it up. Right. <laughs> and because my friends were not privy to that particular level that I was pushing towards, mm -hmm. it became uh, a back and forth. You're doing too much. You think you know everything. You think that you're better. And for me, how I received it was, it was kind of like it became me versus them. So we were like, competing for each competing against each other. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that way. Yes. We may have entered competitions together or whatever the case may be, but it's like, at the end of the day, we're still friends or family mm -hmm. outside of that come that what I pose to be good camaraderie. And I think walking away from that, what hurt me was in me having fun embracing my career and pushing for what my next level was, I was hurting everybody else. And the dual fold to that is why I say stay focused on whatever you understand your why is because you're always going to offend someone. You're always going to hurt someone. Someone is, no one is ever going to agree, nor is everyone going to understand your vision. But if they truly love you and care for you, when it comes to, fully in light, either they're going to support you from a distance or they, they, they're going to believe you, but just sit back a little bit and mm -hmm. allow you to do your thing. Um, and that's what I mean, of uh, owning your space, you know what I mean? Cause I, I lost it. I lost it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, I'm like, I'm hurt. I lost friends. I lost mm -hmm. family. Um, and I could not find my center and I lost my focus. And what was funny is um, I always wanted to compete in Naha because that was the first photo shoot for hairdressers by hairdressers that understood hairdressing, right? Mm -hmm. 
in the business outside of doing editorial work and, you know, being a celebrity stylist or in TV and film or just being, you know, uh, let's say corporate based salon with multiple locations. That was an accolade to get to. I lost sight of that once I once I started to go through the pitfall when I felt like I lost my foundation. So I couldn't figure out where I was going, what I was doing, what it was just I became a workhorse and lost that kind of creative edge. But I still have my strong clientele. I mean, mm-hmm. I produce work, but it still didn't have that, mm, ah, you know, that mm, that you be like, yeah, I love that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And regardless of what that is, you know, to other people, you know, what whatever their zhuzh is, whatever their that makes them feel good. It, it could be a haircut. It can be textured hair. It can be blowouts. It could be silk presses. It can be blonding. It could be short hair, men's barbering, whatever, it, whatever mm-hmm. it is. I lost that and, and it was starting to come back in conversation with Kia and just her pushing me out there to do different things. It's Mm -hmm. it's all coming back like that good feeling and at TBR and, and I'm working on my model and I'm just like, I don't know what I'm going to do this, that, and other. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I do have an idea. And I'm like, who is this guy recording you (laughs) and, um, uh, one, I think, yep. Yes. And I'm like, what? They record. I mean, but I'm not because I'm yeah. focused on trying yep. to complete. This and we were thing. trying to leave everybody alone, so that was the other thing. We were not trying to intervene and ask what was That's going true. on. But and then, and then and then Aaron is like, "Shut down is at three. Yep. Mm-hmm, got to be mm-hmm, ready." And I'm mm-hmm. just like, "Man, I don't got four hours worth of color to do. I don't know." Yep. So I'm yep. like working. I'm looking. I'm like, is everybody? because I'm in, in, engrossed in what's happening. I'm. Mm-hmm. I, fully invested in that moment. So I couldn't like really pay attention to everything that was happening. I just kept looking, what's going on? But anyway, let me keep it. So needless to say, I pushed forward. And right after I finished, right after I got off stage, you were outside and you said, you know, you, you, you gave me accolades. And I, and I felt that and I felt so alive and appreciative. But the one thing that you said was like, have you ever competed in nine? And I'm just like, he gets it. He get he get what what my caliber of trying to produce. It makes sense. You got it. So kudos to you, and I thank you because that just kind of just opened me up to like you still got it in you, and if that's your goal, get to it. Chase it, chase it. No, for sure. Well, again, we are going to be linking out to this example uh, that we keep referring to because it'll blow your mind. Um, you absolutely should pursue all of the stuff that you're after. Um, we want big things for you. We know that's that you're going to get says. them. Excuse all your fucking head. dreams. No, we'll we'll beep it out if we have to. Um, but that's that's the vibe. Um, that's the vibe for 2023 for sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your creative work then. I mean, I think like you are inspired by your creativity you no. challenge yourself to 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 use it as much as possible but you are unique and that you're not willing to let that creativity compromise the integrity of your client's hair um, which i think is a huge differentiator um, and obviously quite important when you're working with textured hair um, mm-hmm. talk to us about that like how do you maintain that balance um we, you talked a lot about like finding your center and that focus. Um, so well, now that you're in that and you're in that purpose, like how does it come together for you? You got to be real. You got to be truthful. You got to be truthful mm. with you mm. and your client and your model and about the expectations because it's many a times that clients brought in a picture um, mm-hmm. and my coworker, Kia, I don't, she's, which we probably do an interview with her too. He is coming up. Kia Sterling, to be clear. Kia not Sterling. Kia Neal. Kia Sterling. Shout out to Kia Sterling. Incredible. Kia She'll be on the, the podcast in the future. Hey, Kia Sterling. She, she taught me this trick a long time ago. When a client pulls out a picture or pull out Instagram um, or whatever social media or something mm-hmm. like that, put your thumb over the person's face and ask them, do you still want this look? Mm. And 70% of the time, they, I don't want that. It's a no. Yeah. What to be her. You When you see that picture, you want that same feeling that you mm-hmm. see. You look at that picture. You want that same emotion to be attached to you. So it's my job to filter through that and figure mm. it out, right? Now, once we figure it out, I got to ask you all the, I got to ask you the, the traditional norm. What's yep. your life now like? What do you do? Like, if you're in corporate America, I don't think I want to give you neon yellow highlights 
you know, and if you do add them in my house, I had to make sure I put them in the right spot. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Then, you know, go through the traditional, like, what's your, what's your hair story life? Like, what, it, what is your day to day? Um, and then have a truthful conversation. With, okay. This come up with options, mm-hmm. right? Because again, like doing Naha or doing photo shoot or editorial work or doing stage work, sometimes that work does not translate to saying to an everyday consumer. For sure. You can zhuzh it up or you can scale it back. Mm -hmm. The the technique or the patterns or, you know, placement rather can all be the same, but your color choices have to be different. Your Mm -hmm. style choices have to fit the person because you want it to be, you want the person to feel open and embrace whatever that look is, whether they're transitioning from wearing straighter hair to their quaffs and curls Mm -hmm. or transitioning from curls to straight, whatever the case may be, you want them to wear it, feel it and own it as opposed to it wearing them. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a very big component that sometimes as creatives, we're so focused on everything here, Mm -hmm. not making sure that it connects here and here. You guys, this is a audio medium but the video you should find it find it on youtube find it on our instagram see what jimez just did um with his hands that's a that's a big mood i feel that um but let's talk about an example of your work there's this one look on your instagram that we are obsessed with uh talk to us about how this came together because this is incredible so this particular look um was not a planned look so and I don't know if you actually see it on my Instagram. There are three shots, um, mm-hmm. three three backgrounds. But when I planned the shoot, it was a it was inspired by a a brand, a particular brand that had just released their particular uh, product line. I don't want to get into detail of sure, it. Sure, yeah, yeah. No, we don't need to close them. I wanted to do my own. I'm challenging myself. This is yeah. I'm at challenging yep. period. Yep, like, have fun. And I got my team, like I had my set photographer, I had my makeup artist, I had my muses that I use all the time. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is what I want to do. Okay. Every, everybody was on board, but I only planned for two looks. Mm-hmm. That was the redhead and the blonde. I didn't plan for the platinum. So once I finished the shoot, I'm looking at my photographer and he's like, something's missing. I'm like, what? What is missing? I just did all this. Yeah, just, yeah. What are you talking about? Yep. yep. I just did all this. I just did all this, bro. Like, what's going on? Like, I really just put my thing in this. And that shoot was in 2012. I just put my thing down. What are you talking about missing? He was like, I think it should be a collection. And then it hit me. I was like, most collections that are presented, it's always in three. It's always mm-hmm. traditionally the 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 standard norm is short, medium, and long. I had long, I had medium, I didn't have like a short. And my cousin, who was also my muse, I had just cut her hair off previously. Mm. And I'm like, I got to make this happen. He's like, can you get somebody here tomorrow and figure it out? This was on a Monday night, Tuesday morning. I'm ordering, trying to find wigs and I'm ordering hair color. Like I'm in the beauty supply store, yep. like trying to make this happen. I'm like, cousin, I need you. What do you want me to do now? You always want me to do something. <laughs> it's like, please, please. I just got to complete this look. So I talked to my makeup artist. She was like, all right, I got, I can, I remember everything that I did and we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And I started coloring hair. I didn't know what is what, I didn't know what the cut was going to look like. I did not, I just, this worked. Mm-hmm. And so being as though the other two models, the previous day shot together, most of her shots were by herself. And so mm-hmm. if you see a shot, with all three models, the one is cropped in. And I did, really did not have an inspiration for that. I just kind of just looked at it and I was like, how can I really push the envelope on this? And so when I made the wig, I was like, I love these colors. Let me make this happen. I did it, right? Mm. But I wasn't sure if they cut. Mm. So it was an all long wig, but I wasn't sure it was, what I was doing with the cut. I just knew that I had color and I needed to place it somewhere. So now I'm like I'm cutting and making <laughs> work. And it it honestly, it really came together. There is no like, oh, I was on the I was on the grease aisles of the land and yeah, I yeah. no, no. It honestly I just pulled whatever in the I was, moment. 
in that moment. That mm. was that was a creative moment. And mm. I looked that look till I couldn't work it no more. Uh, well, I mean, and it transcends. So all these years later, like this is something that stands out. It's on your site. Like I, this is one we wanted to comment on. Um, again, like Jamez is, is a genius. Like there, there's no getting around it. Like color, the, all of it, um, the whole package comes together. So again, we're huge fans on the tease here on the Volume Up podcast. Um, Jamez, before we get into our quick takes, um, I want to know, like what's what's next? Like what is in the sites for 2023 and beyond for you? Um, in the sites for 2023, I really wanted to understand, remember going back to that why, mm -hmm. uh, cause I've always been involved in education. I was in, involved in education before I had a, a book and a book, a full book in a salon. So I was teaching or assisting and backstage assisting for shows, um, for manufacturers long before I had a full three or four day book in a salon. And so education has always kind of been ingrained in me from the beginning. And I question a lot, should I be educated? Because there's so many, so much talent out here, so much mm -hmm. And these people are amazing. Like I go to every, anybody class that I think is interesting, I'll sit in a class or, you know, I'll jump on their web, jump in their webinar. And cause I'm a sponge, I can learn from anybody and anything, sure. but a lot of my peers and friends asking, always ask me, well, when is your next class? When are you mm -hmm. doing? Well, and I'm just like, huh, maybe I should go down this road for education. But I got lost in the way of, is a difference. People don't separate the difference between an influencer and an educator. Mm. And so they're all mm. kind of used together. And I don't, I don't consider myself an influencer. I'm not a social media person. like. Mm -hmm. I had to ask you, how do I get this video that you posted of me? You know, because I know. nobody me. needs to know that, but, <laughs> but I know what you need. I know what you mean. Um, and, and that's, that comes through. I mean, like you are an educator and you've got so much knowledge, wisdom to impart. So how is that coming together? I'm working at it as we speak. Okay. Okay. As we speak, like I have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I just did something. I'm in New York. We don't need to know everything, but I, right. I know that there's going to be big things and we're going to be checking in on you. Um, so do me a favor, plug yourself. Where can people who are listening before we get into our quick takes and wrap, where can they find you? How could they book with you if they were interested, if they're in Philly or they want to come through? Tell us everything. Sure. So you, yeah, everybody can reach me at, um, on Instagram. My handle is I am the letter J moving to the letter M E Z Smith, Jamez Smith, just no a, um, on Instagram. Um, also on Facebook, Jamez Smith. Um, you can also go to www.jamezsmith.com. Um, and then also my salon, uh, which is hair tea, color and design, LLC, color and design.com hair tea, color and design.com. And also on Facebook. So just Google, just Google. Yeah, me. just Google. <laughs> Plus we've going to, we're going to put all of those links in the show notes to this podcast. So y'all can just go through, click, make it happen, follow, rate, review, all of those things. And all right, Jamez, we're going to do our quick takes before we leave you to go and do all of the stuff that you've been doing that we are keeping you from the questions that we ask are the same, the ones that we ask of all of our podcast guests. So looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, okay. The first question that we have is what was your first ever beauty product, hair, beauty, whatever that you remember getting for yourself? Buying for myself or given to? Uh, it could be given as long okay. as it's like a formative memory of a beauty product. <laughs> I want to know what that is. Um, my honestly, my very first beauty product was a product that my aunt gave me. It was by Essations, a product line called Essations, and it was this cream moisture press stuff. And before I got good with soap presses, she wanted to make sure that I understood the process of straightening hair and how mm -hmm. to curl it. And I worked that product till I could not work that product no more to the point where it's just like, I don't even like this product anymore. <laughs> uh, I mean, smoothing with ponytails, laying flyaways down, curl it, create sculpture curls with it. Yeah. Jamez, are you superstitious? And if so, 
about what? Unfortunately, um, I used to be like the traditional don't split a poll. If you, you don't split the poll, whoever is the oldest is going to get the bad luck, step on a crack, break your mama's back, no black cats and all that. But mm-hmm. um, I'm a believer now. Um, so the superstitions doesn't really push me the way that they've done previously. So, okay. yeah. all right. Uh, who would play you in a biopic of your life? Oh, that's a good question. As an adult, I definitely would want Will Smith. Okay. Some kind of way. Some kind of way. Um, I was, yeah, I would say, I would say Will Smith, even though he's older than me, but I mean, Hey, Will, Will transform. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, tra- he transformed me. characters. He transformed. I could see it. I could see it. I actually live, and I actually live around the corner from where his grandma used to live. So, oh, yeah. Oh, Philly, 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 Philly. Okay. Um, what do you consider the ultimate comfort food? That's a very tricky question. And the reason why that I say that is it all depends on the mood that oh, I need. Oh, for sure. To no, that's impossible. But but think, give me something. But believe it or not, I I I balance between soul food. Mm-hmm. And when I say soul food, we're talking about fried chicken, fried fish, macaroni and cheese, candy yam, fried cabbage. I don't like collards. Sorry. I don't mm-hmm. want to lose my card to my people, but I don't like collard greens. But anyway, um, but that is potato salad. Those things resonate with me. Like mm-hmm. I can eat that at least three to five times out of the week. Mm-hmm. But, 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 but I do have a soft spot for pasta. And going to Rome twice, well, going to Italy twice, I had a whole different experience of what uh, the Italian cuisine is like. Mm-hmm. And uh, just like, yeah. Very spoiled. I was going to ask you if you had like your eat, pray, love moment when you were when you were there, but it sounded like you were not not in a good place the, the first trip. I still had a good time. I mean, the food was amazing. I got really introduced to the whole gelato thing. I think every time I went, every time I turned the corner, I think I just yeah. went... <laughs> I want that. I mean, <laughs> every flavor, uh, caramel de leche to raspberry. I think every time I made a stop coming out of a store, it was a gelato place and I was grabbing one. Absolutely amazing. But the the pasta quality was totally different over there mm-hmm. as opposed to here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, even here, I still love it. So I do have a soft spot on my side for, you know, that good Italian, good Italian okay. food. All right. <laughs> All right. This is our last question and possibly Wait. the most important. Um, it is. You're on a deserted island. You can only bring three things, only three things with you, but like, you're not going to die. But this is not like a, you need to worry about water and like sunblock and like, we're, we're good, but okay, you're on right, a deserted island. Ask. No, no, no. The, the essentials are covered. So okay. like beauty product, hair product, the things that like you need to keep yourself together. What are those three things? Let us know. Well, I can tell you right now, doesn't matter whether it's curly or straight soap press, um, keeping texture in whatever is Redkins One United leave-in conditioner. Mm-hmm. I have, I cannot live without it. I don't know what's in it. Well, I technically <laughs> know what's in it. Yeah, you know what's in it, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, I have to have it. Um, some people don't like it for those who are a little bit more natural and like, you know, things that are, you know, has less ingredient count. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. This product works. It works. It works. That's all I can say. It works for okay. me. So one, one, we're down. That's all right, one. two more. Um, the second thing would be um, Kenra's Polish Silkening Gloss. The reflection, the softness serum that gives to the hair. Um, on my curly girls, I have to use it on certain textures. I can't use it on every texture because it isn't hydrating enough or it doesn't still as much moisture as possible because obviously the hair already has to be hydrated. Yeah. Um, and then coupling with that will be, um, uh, Mazzani's, uh, raincoat, uh, thermal serum, thermal smooth serum. So those, they go hand in hand, all three of those <laughs> products. I'm going to do some hair. <laughs> I'd love to see it, um, on that deserted Island. All right. Jamez Smith, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast for your time, for sharing so much of your story. I feel like a lot of our listeners are going to resonate with that journey that you have gone on, um, well, several journeys, um, but especially towards the salon ownership. Um, I feel like there were some real gems in there. Um, But again, cannot thank you enough. We know big things are in store for you. Big things have already happened, but they're going to keep happening. Um, As I said, all of 
Jim has his socials, his salon, et cetera, in the show notes. So go, go ahead and do yourselves a favor. Make sure to follow, get in touch. Um, Jim has, thank you so much again. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you to the T's. Thank you to Volume Up Podcast. Thank you to you, Jeffrey, uh, just believing in me and just seeing, seeing something. And um, I'm grateful and honored that you guys have me on. I hope uh, the ducats, uh, the information, the nuggets and ducats are good for the people because uh, they're genuine, they're true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they pulled me, they pulled me through a lot of things in this business. I've been doing hair for 20 years, going over 20 years now, and they're tried and true. Hmm. And here's to 20, 20 more. Yep, I received it. <laughs>